In this video, I'm going to be teaching how to draft a princess blouse. If you are interested in it, kindly watch till the end. Don't forget to like, comment, and share my videos. Let's get started. So these are the items I'm going to be using to make the patterns. Plus a paper for calculating. Now at the center front, I marked one inch in and then at the upper part, I marked one inch in as well. This part is going to be for the center front and that part is going to be for the shoulder. So that's the shoulder line. Now on the shoulder line, I'm going to indicate with S and the center front with CF. We are going to be dividing our bars by 4, waist by 4. That's my shoulder to waist 16, nipple to nipple 7, shoulder 14, and shoulder to bars 9 inches. Now from the shoulder at the center front, I'm going to be marking 9 inches down. That is my shoulder to bust point or shoulder to nipple. After marking that point, I'll go ahead and then connect with my ruler to get a straight line. From here, I'll be marking from the shoulder to waist measurement, which is 16 inches. So after marking, I'll go ahead and then connect with my ruler as well to get another straight line. So now we have our shoulder, bust, and then waistline. Now my shoulder is 14 inches. I'm going to divide it by 2. So on the shoulder line, divide your shoulder by 2 and then mark. Mine is 7 inches. And at that same point, I'm going to come down by 1 inch. Now from the center front, I'm going to mark in 3 inches in and then 3 inches down for neckline. That is the standard neckline for the front. After marking my neckline, I'll go ahead and then slant from that point to that point to get the shoulder slant. So just draw a straight line and get your shoulder slant. Now the 7 inches I marked on the shoulder, I'm going to mark that same 7 inches on the bust line and then connect with my ruler to get a line like this. I'm going to be dividing that line into two to get the armhole for the front. After dividing into two, come in by half inch. You know the front part of the body has a curve at the armhole. So this is why there's supposed to be a curve here. So take your time and then connect with your French curve just like this. After that, I'll go ahead and insert my bust measurements and then my waist measurements. So whatever you have for the bust, divide by 4 and then mark whatever you have for the waist, divide by 4 and mark. After marking, I'll go ahead and then join those two points together. Before we work on the nipple to nipple measurements or under that, I'm going to be coming down by 3 inches from the bust point to get my under bust measurement. If you are busty, you can come down by 3.5 inches. After marking, I'll go ahead and then connect the points together and then label that part under bust. So now we have our bust, our under bust, waist, and then our shoulder. Now I'm going to be measuring from that upper part of the armhole to the end of it, and then I had 9 inches. I'm going to be marking 4.5 at the center because 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. After getting the 4.5, I'm going to be dividing my nipple to nipple by 2, which is 3.5. And then on the bust line, I'm going to be adding half inch to the 3.5 to get 4 inches. On the under bust, I'm going to be adding 3.5 and then on the waist, 3.5. From that point, I'll go ahead and then connect it through to the armhole. 
on the bass line i'm going to be coming down from that point one inch this is because the front that starts one inch below the bass point so we are going to be connecting through to the arm hole so just pay attention and then watch closely what i am doing after connecting we are going to be working on the size of the dart and then on the waistline i'm going to be marking two inches in that is the size of our dart and then the under bust line i'm going to be marking two inches in as well note we came down by one inch at the bust point so we are going to connect from that point through to that point just watch closely and then see how i kept the line from that point to that point this will give you a nice shape at the bust if you are able to get the curve right so after curving i'll go ahead and then join those two points together just like this i realized my curve wasn't that curvy so i'll go ahead and then mark it right after that i'm going to be putting another dart at that arm hole and the size of that dart is one inch so stand at the center just like this and then mark half inch on both sides making one inch now from the bust point i'm going to go up by one inch this will enable me get a better shape after sewing go up by one inch and then connect from that point to that point and from the other point to that point as well just as i am doing you can decide to do this with your curve if you want to so this is what we are going to get after getting our dart and then on the lower part of the dart just here i'm going to go, go out by 1.5 inches this is because after cutting out the dart there will be a shortage at that point and if you don't add up you you get shortage of fabric when sewing so after that, that 1.5 I marked there, I'll go ahead and then mark, mark it or replace it at the bust line. Now measure the size of the dart at the under bust and then the waistline and then mark it out like I am doing. After marking, just go ahead and then connect with your ruler. Note this is not seam allowance, this is for the dart, the dart we took out. Now from that point, I'll go ahead and then connect to the new bust line I have, just like this. Now on the, wa on the waistline, I'm going to go up by half inch and then mark to where the dart starts, just like that. This is to get a perfect blouse when after sewing or when sewing, you won't get any difficulties now i'm going to trace out the front minus the dots inside and then minus the dot seam allowance so just trace from that point through to the bars to that point and then to the center front do not trace the dots out so this paper is actually folded into two and i went ahead to trace this out after tracing it out i'll go ahead and then cut out since i use the tracing wheel it is not clear and then after drawing the lines you will see the outcome so this is how the front is going to look like and at this point i'm done with it i'll go ahead and then cut it out after cutting it out i'll go ahead and then work on the back just pay attention to how I am cutting it and then note this part the center front doesn't need a zip so it's not part of the front it's going to be unfold at this point i'll go ahead and then trace out the lines from the front bodies notice it's not clear because i used a tracing wheel so after tracing you are going to see it on your brown paper and then just Connect the lines with your ruler like I am doing. After connecting, you will see the outcome and see what I was talking about. So at this point, I'm drawing in my neckline and then shoulder. So this is all for the front. I told you trace out without the dots. So the dots 
or the nipple to nipple was 7 so I'll go ahead and then mark 3.5 inches on the bust and then waistline and then connect with my ruler after that I'm going to measure about 3.5 inches 3 inches or 2 inches down from the upper part of the shoulder you can decide to use any of the figures I mentioned because we don't want any curved line at the back there is no shape at the back to get a curve so after coming down by 3.5 inches or 3 I'll go ahead and then connect with my curve just like this for the back so you don't need it to be curvy like the front after that I'm going to be placing half inch on both sides of that line to get my dart note the dart for the back starts at this bust point and then the front starts one inch below the bust point at this point I'll go ahead and then replace my dart and after that I'm going to connect to get a straight line with my ruler so this is how the front look like at the moment i have my shoulder bust and then waist line i'm going to be subtracting one inch from the back because the back is normally shorter than the front otherwise when you fix a zip it's going to create some funny effects at the back so at that point, I'm going to go up by one inch and then connect it to the armhole. This is because after joining the back, there is normally a shortage at that side. That is the only reason why I'm adding it. So after that, you go ahead and replace it at the side like we did for the front. And then connect with your curve and then with your ruler to the waist line. So this is all for the back I'll go ahead and then cut it out to show you how it looks like in the end so don't forget to like comment and share my videos don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get notified anytime I post videos so this is how the back look like and that is the zip extension the center back this is both front and back placed together so this is all you need for the front and then back i'm going to be placing it on a fabric to cut out for you to see how i'm going to be adding the seam allowances so i went ahead to trace it on the fabric this is because in case the brown paper shifts i'll still get the shape of the pattern so i'll go ahead and then mark half inch on every part of it except the side which i added two inches seam allowance so as you can see this is how the front is and then on the lines the bust and then the under bust you have to indicate it so that when you are sewing you know the point you are matching together to sew so this is how it's going to be cut out for the front and then for the back you are going to repeat the same process for the front and back this is the front so you do the same for the back this is the end of the tutorials thanks for watching bye